Hey guys, Josh Hankin here, creator of the DVRT Ultimate Sandbag Core Training Program. What we're going to cover today is some of the sort of misconceptions of training with the Ultimate Sandbag and what people do incorrectly in their performance of the movements. Now, this isn't just about us teaching you how to use a sandbag uh, more appropriately, but really making sure that you don't get hurt in the process of training in your Ultimate Sandbag workouts. The, probably the biggest thing that people do incorrectly is they try to use the Ultimate Sandbag like a barbell, like a kettlebell, like a dumbbell. It really has its own entity and way of use. Because of the way it's designed, the way it actually moves and functions, you have to be aware of these details so that you can both train safely and keep making progress in the long run. So probably the first thing we're going to cover is the sort of misc snatching and cleaning of the ultimate sandbag. Now there's a lot of people that have never had exposure to Olympic lifting and that's okay. Those of you that have never learned it and those of you that have, there's a lot of similar mistakes that people make. Basically the idea is that you're using the body to make the weight feel weightless and to catch the weight in various positions, whether it be the front loaded in the clean or overhead in the snatch. This really teaches you how to use your hamstrings and glutes and it's a very dynamic action. Unfortunately, a lot of people become task oriented. They just look at the weight going from point A to point B and they sort of don't pay attention to how it is done. Remember, the whole purpose of any exercise is the movement that the body creates in the performance of the exercise. So what we're gonna do is we'll cover a couple uh, small details. The first is grabbing onto the wrong handles on the USB. It may sound like a small detail, but it has profound effects. For one, I've gone over this before. This is a closed shoulder position. Okay, so even on barbell lifting, you'll see great Olympic lifters, they're able to actually retract and depress their shoulder blades to keep themselves locked into place. Because if you lose the shoulder blades, you're gonna lose the low back during the performance of these exercises. However, during the barbell, you can grab wider and you can also bend what the cue is bending the bar. That doesn't happen with the USB because the handles are much more narrow and if you try to bend them, they just sort of fold. So you don't get the same effect. What Jessica's going to do is show you the other attribute or what happens when you, cl you clean and you snatch with the wrong handles. So well, she's going to grab one of the snatch grip handles and watch her as she cleans the USB here. So what you notice is that the USB creates a flip. Okay, let's do a couple more, Jess. One more. Now, just because so strong, it doesn't seem to really bother her. But as she goes ahead and let's go and grab a strength USB, what's going to happen is that weight coming away from her creates a lot of momentum and she's also having to have the weight come away from her body to receive it. So let's see one or two here, Jess. So now when the weight, see how she has to work much harder and she's putting her back and shoulders at much more risk. So she's not really in that safe position because the bag gets momentum as it's flipping on over. Now let's go ahead and go in the neutral grip handles for a moment. So with the neutral grip handles, number one, she can open her shoulder joints, she can put her shoulders in the right position. Now watch the difference in the lift. So now it looks like it's still coming over, but it's a little different. Instead of coming over, she's coming up and then shooting her arms underneath. Let's see a couple more, Jess. Doesn't this look a lot smoother than grabbing onto those snatch grip handles? It doesn't cost you anything to use the correct handles. What we're trying to do is make sure that you get the most out of these lifts. The second mistake people make, and this comes from a lot of people that maybe don't have the background in Olympic lifting, is they catch the weight far too early. I mean, they're almost catching and then scooping it into position. So to show you sort of the wrong thing here, Jessica can go a little lighter USB here. Let's go a little bit lighter. Whenever you do anything wrong on purpose, you sort of want air on going lighter. So she's gonna sort of catch it on its way up low and then sort of scoop it in position. Good. So what she's doing is she's actually catching it on out, almost extended arms out and then rolling it into her body. You don't want to do that for a couple reasons. One is that it puts the shoulder in a position of compromise. So if I catch the load here, I have a greater lever arm upon my shoulder joint. When I scoop and catch it with my body, my body absorbs the load. There's really no pressure upon the shoulder joint. If I also create a lever arm for my shoulder, I'm also creating a lever arm for my low back. So you really want to be careful about doing this. The good cue you want to think about is the weight should be weightless about the chest level and I'm just scooping and catching it in position. The same thing if Jessica were to go overhead in the snatch. Now in the snatch, she does grab these hands because we do want the bag to rotate over the top. But again, she's going to have her arms come up and then she's going to shoot her arms underneath. So Jessica, let's do a couple repetitions on the snatch all the way up. Good. Now, a lot of people, they won't get their elbows up high enough, so the bag gets caught sort of mid-air. So you really want to drive those elbows nice and tall. So let's see a nice, powerful drive, Jess. And you see how she sort of just receives the weight in position. She's thinking about her arms driving up to the sky, not back. Nice. So a lot of people, too, they'll catch the weight out here. Again, creating a bad point for their arm and for the low back. More so in the snatch, you're going to probably hurt your arm in this position, even though you sort of move the weight up. 
Good rule of thumb, anything that you wouldn't do with a heavyweight, you don't do with a lightweight. So that covers some of the misconceptions with the clean and the snatch. We're gonna cover a couple more within, the, within this video. All right guys, now probably for the second most common mistake, it's the pressing overhead. It's one of the most valuable tools we have in our ultimate sandbag system, but a lot of people do it incorrectly. Again, they sort of treat it like a barbell. If Jessica goes ahead and grabs those snatch grip handles and does get the weight in position here, so let's go ahead and clean it first, Jess. Now, if she wants to press from this position, let's look at a couple things. If I turn her to this side, look at the distance from her hand to her shoulder. It's a pretty long distance. So that's gonna create a longer lever arm upon her front part of her shoulder. So as she presses up and out, she can't really rely on her body and her lats to press. She's relying upon the front part of the shoulder. This isn't a shoulder press as we think about in most traditional fitness programs. It's supposed to be a full body press. So if Jessica goes ahead and grabs the correct handles, now let's go ahead and clean it again, Jess. See how we've reduced that space from the shoulder to um, hand. So now when she presses, she can use her entire body and much safer upon the shoulder joint. So you really don't want to catch it like you would a barbell. You have to be aware of both the implement that you're using and the size of ultimate sandbag you're using. Jessica is actually pretty broad from her years in swimming. So if she, for her, when she uses a power core ultimate sandbag, she's generally going to err on the outside handle. So let's do one more clean there, Jess. So how do you know which position you should be in? You want to be maybe in line to the shoulders to slightly out. You never want to have your hands really inside upon the shoulders. If Jessica goes ahead and tries to clean it upon her fist now, like we would in larger USBs, and if she turns towards the camera here, her hands are actually inside her shoulder joint. So she's actually forced here. So if she goes to press it, she's going to lead actually with the traps, which is what we don't want, rather than put, pushing through the body and using that lat to press above the head. However, for some of you ladies, you're going to be a little smaller framed. So if, you, if this does put you in good alignment, meaning that you're in line with the shoulder or slightly out, you're good to go. The challenge is getting the USB upon the fist though. With a smaller USB, the surface area is smaller, so the challenge to be more proficient in your clean is bigger. Now, that's also why I love using larger USBs, because when Jessica now cleans this USB, this puts her in perfect alignment as long as she gets up on the fist. Having the USB upon the fist also keeps us a short distance from shoulder to hand. If she were to go ahead and let roll over upon her hand and even press from here, again, we're increasing that distance from shoulder to hand, putting her at risk for her shoulder joint. So you wanna be both aware of the different implement in the ultimate sandbag that you're using and specifically the size of ultimate sandbag you're using as well. All right guys, now the third most common mistake people make is probably using the ultimate sandbag like they would a cowbell. I am a big fan of cowbells, but you have to understand the differences between a kettlebell and an ultimate sandbag. Probably most profoundly is in the swing. Now the kettlebell swing is a very popular exercise. Just gonna go ahead and show a few repetitions here. So with the kettlebell swing, again, we're trying to use the hips to create a projection of the weight. Big thing that you wanna do in the swing is you're actively pulling the weight between your legs. You're not letting it just fall down. That's gonna be a big difference when you're starting to use the ultimate sandbag. So if I move the kettlebell out of the way, a lot of people wanna swing the ultimate sandbag upon two hands upon one side. You don't want to do this for a couple of reasons. One is that it doesn't move sm smoothly as one unit. You sort of have an inner shift back and forth, almost like a rebound effect. Secondly is Jessica can't really back swing it. She almost has to let it fall between her legs because the long lever arm is sort of swinging back and forth. So it's not really A, being as productive as the cable swing, and B, it's not as safe because her shoulders and low back are far more at risk. So what do you do if you want to do swing type movements with the ultimate sandbag? That's why we have much different exercises. For one, we can be working what we call shoveling. Shoveling is still a hip proje projection and we're just working in a rotational movement. So as she pivots, she's gonna hinge and then she can pull the weight down to one side just like she would in the kettlebell swing. But she's getting far more movement so you can actually use less weight during this exercise that would be just as fatiguing as using a heavier weight because in the kettlebell swing, you're in a more stable body position. And for a lot of you that have been following this for a while, the rotational lunge is one of our favorite exercises because it creates that same projection, especially as you start to move faster. She can start creating a projection and because she's more unbalanced upon one leg, she's expending more calories because her body now has to produce movement, has to also resist movement. So with a lot of these three sort of categories of sort of how to use the ultimate sandbag 
properly, you should really find that your progress skyrockets. If you use the implement incorrectly, not only could you have a bad experience, but unfortunately you can get hurt in the process and then you think there's a problem with the training style and unfortunately not in the way it's used. So that's why I really encourage you to find DVRT instructors in your area and also follow the workout videos that we're providing you so that you have proper instruction on how to implement ultimate sandbag training for your goals. So check out more at DVRTfitness.com.